Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationeers. As part of future updates for Stationeers, they're planning on bringing sandstorms and weather events to Mars. Apparently the sandstorms will block out your solar power. So today we're going to install a backup generator just to make sure we don't run out of power. Now setting up the generator is quite easy. The trick in it all is deciding how you want it to work. How are we going to get this to be a backup power supply? Now we can just look at our battery, find out when it gets low, then we can just switch the generator on. But if we wait for the, the power to get low, switch the generator on, then back off it again when it reaches the power threshold, we're not making efficient use of our coal. So we just switch it on for a second, Oop, all the power's gone. It's only got a second of power, but all the coal's been burnt. I didn't burn that coal completely. Let us split one off, put it in there, you can find it actually goes for a good few seconds, still going, and stopped. So it goes for a good five or six seconds there, generating power. If you want to be a real tight ass on your coal, we want to make sure we get a maximum burn out of it. So instead of just switching this on and off, I want a system that will load coal into it one piece at a time, whenever the battery gets low, and allow it to burn in the entirety of the coal. We can do that just by using a stacker. I'll pop him down here for the sake of experiments. So we will also want to read what the battery level is. If we've only got one battery, we can read that one directly. But if we've got multiple batteries, we don't want to have to look into all of them one at a time. So for that, we're going to use a batch reader to read the battery charge level and just return an average. There we go, like that. Now if we connect our battery our battery data connected up to our power cable here. I don't want to be on that circuit, so I'll just hook the data input straight up to that line there, and the data output can come into the circuit that we'll be using on this side of the transformer. And done, wired in. So we shall want to read from the battery the ratio, just as the percentage of the battery that's full and we will want the average. Switch it on. Right, so now that we've got something to read our battery power, we've got our stacker, we now have to figure out a way to get the stacker to drop a single piece of coal into the furnace, wait for it to burn and then drop more if needed. Now creating a timer to get it to wait to burn is not very easy just using logic chips. So on this one here, I'm just going to jump straight into coding an IC. So now if we take a look at our stacker, we've got our stack size set to one. That's good. We only want to drop in one piece of coal at a time. But if we chuck in some coal, it's going to immediately spit it all out the other side, which is not what we want it to do. We want it to hold the coal until we tell it to drop it. Now if we take a look at our stacker using our device, configuration, we can see that it has a few items in there that we can set. So let's start with the mode. Find that the mode is currently set to mode 0, which is to immediately drop everything that it's got. We need to switch that to mode 1, which we can do quite easily with our code. We're just going to alias our stacker, which is, well, which is connected to D0, or will be. And just as our setup part, we're just sort of saying save the stacker mode to 1. Now if we look, we should find our mode has changed to 1, which is what we want. So now if we insert the coal, it should hold it, which it does. Good stuff. We're part of the way there. So next we've got to read in what's on the batch reader, and we shall decide whether that's less than our threshold, which will say is 20%. If it is less than 20%, we'll use the output command to drop a piece of coal. So we've added in our battery batch reader. We've aliased that to pin D1, which we've connected up. We've added in a variable, we've called it power. We just renamed register one as power, just a bit more meaningful than register one. And we've added in a main loop. First thing we want to do is load the current power setting from the battery batch reader and store it in the variable power. Now we go to our main loop, our main branch in the loop here. 
you branch if it's greater than so if power is greater than 0.2 20% go back to the start it's above the threshold no more to do if it's not continue down the program so we want to save to the stacker output one that should release one piece of cold and then we sleep for 10 seconds just to give it a chance for the cold to burn before we jump back to the start we are below 10 below 20 percent so export that we should drop some coal so single piece 10 seconds and another single piece good oh that's working the way we want it right so with that done i'll be quite happy now to hook this up to our generator and be quite confident that it's going to work all hooked up a couple of window shoots there so we can see what we're doing now if i reset it by pulling the chip and drop our coal in see a piece of coal goes in generator switched on it waits We're still below power. It pops another one in. We're above 20%. It should not put any more in now. And we're done. Good. That's working the way we want it to work. We can be happy with that. Or, seeing as we're already reading the power there, we can add a bit of an extra little bit of quality of life item to it. Seeing as we're already reading the power there, how about we put up a display? And one display ready to go. Now if we look look at the display with our configuration, we find that it has a mode. Now according to the stationary's wiki there, if we change that mode to a one, it will display in a percentage. So we'll change that to a, to a one. We'll need to read well, we've already read the value from there. We just need to rewrite it back into the display. So we've aliased our display. We're going to connect that to pin D2. Uh, we've saved the mode. First thing we've done now, set up. It's outside the main loop. So it'll do it once when the program first starts up. It'll save, set the mode to 1. And the only other line we've had to add is because we've already read the power on the previous line there we've just inserted another line there to immediately save that back into the display as the setting yeah and there it is we now have a percentage display on there now we can be happy with that and leave it at that but we can also do a bit more what i want to know is if my battery is actually charging or discharging i can see it's sitting on 21 there but is that a good answer or a bad answer the sun's going down I'm willing to bet that that's discharging if I point my mouse at it I can see it is discharging but I didn't know that it'd be nice to have it change color perhaps to let me know that if it, if it is charging or discharging to decide whether or not the power is going up or down we need to remember what the power was the last time it went through the loop so we've created another variable here called old power I've just defined a couple of colors there for the display now green is color value 2, orange is color value 3, so I don't have to remember that. I've just created a couple of names for them to use through the code. Now the comparison in this one is we want to set, set if it's less than. So if the power is less than the old power, true or false, save that variable into R0. We're just using R0 as a temporary variable because we're just going to use it on the next couple of lines and then throw it away. We don't care about it. So. If, our old, if the current power is less than the old power, save that value true or false into R0. Now we're using a select command. So depending on R0, if R0 is true, orange, if it's false, green. And save that value back over the top of R0 because we don't need that one anymore. Now we're just going to save the display color, whatever, whatever it's picked in that statement there, into R0. Now we move, then we move over the top of the old power, whatever the current power is. So we put the current power in there, and the next time through the loop, it'll load the new power and compare it to the old power. So we're just continually overwriting the old power. Right, and then an important one there is a yield command. 
Now this will loop through very, very quickly. And what we'll end up with is the power, reading the current power, and then very quickly overwriting the old power. And it will be overwriting that very quickly, quicker than the batch reader will update the power. As a result, you'll always end up with a command where the old power and the current power are equal. So we must do that and then yield. Give the, give the batch reader a chance to catch up to this program. So we do a yield and then it can start the next loop. And if we export it, we find out it's night time. Our battery is discharging, so our display has gone orange as it was supposed to do. Now, once again, we could be happy with that, or we can do a bit more. Now, if I'm using the color of the display to tell me whether or not it's charging or discharging, I could probably also use it to tell me when the stack has run out of coal. So if we look at our stationers wiki, it's just available with your F1 command. We find that our stacker, if we look it up, has all the variables there, but it also has slots slots for the imports and exports. Now slots are a bit tricky because if we use our configuration tablet there we can't see what the slots are. So if we're going to have a sticky beak at them we're going to need to pop in a slot reader. So we set this one to the stacker. We have a number of slots there. So we have import slots and two export slots as it said on the on, on the wiki. Now each of those slots has different properties there. So the one we're interested in here is the quantity. So we want to find where, it remembers the coal, there's 26 of them in there. So our import slot has nothing in there, so it's not the one we're after. Our export slot, there we go, it's reading 26 in there. So that is our quantity from slot 3. Now a trick to this one there, although it says in this one here that the slots are numbered 1 to 3, in the actual code there, they're numbered from 0 to 2. So we want to look in slot 2 when we're doing the code, not slot 3 as it says there. So we've just defined a new colour, 4, which is colour red. Right, so the only element we've added in is we've loaded a slot from the stacker, slot 2, the quantity. Save it into our temporary variable, R0. Now we do a branch relative. Branch relative if it's not equal to 0. So if R0 is not equal to 0, which means we do have coal in there, it says skip two lines. So 1, 2, we just skip straight to the sleep command. We'll skip this line here. If it is equal to 0, keep going. It'll set the display colour to red. Then go to the sleep command. So now the red display tells us, go and put some coal in your generator, your twit, or you're going to run out of power. All right, now... We could be happy with that, but seeing as we are actually looking after our power supply, putting backup power, if we look at our stacker here, we find that is actually using 50 watts. So we can actually use a program to switch that off when it's not in use. We just added two lines there, save stacker on to one, just before it has to drop some coal out. And after the burn is cold, we save the stacker on to zero. So we're switching back off again. So the stacker should only be switched on when it's trying to burn some coal. So confirm, export. You find as it's red at the moment, it's trying to burn coal. But it can't because we haven't given it any. It will be staying on. So pop it in there. And the coal and it's switched off. It's above 25 above 20 percent it doesn't want to put more coal in so it shut itself down and it's saving us a bit more power. And there you have it it's an automated backup generator with the power display just for the fun of it. I hope you've enjoyed going through the step-by-step -step process of developing this. If you can't be bothered writing your own code this is all part of my power management script that is on on the workshop. Um, but if you like writing your own code, it's a pretty good one to start to learn programming on. Uh, so, that's about it for today, so until next time, happy building. See ya.